Greetings, folks. This is Mason Weaver. I'm the founder of Raunchy Secrets Only Wives Should Know. I know the name shocks some of you, but it shouldn't. Marriage is what it is. It is a sexual relationship between a man and a woman. That is the only reason that we need to get married. Uh, we can have relationships with women and each other. We can have friendships. We can have partnerships. We can raise kids. We can do everything. But the only difference between you and my sister and my mother and my aunt is going to bed with you. That is the drive of every human. Let's stop playing the little games. We're not in kindergarten anymore. We're not in grade school anymore. Marriage is a sexual relationship. So we named it Raunchy for a reason. Uh, you know, I was married for 35 years to the world's most beautiful, sexiest female on this planet. I was with her 45 years. I'm now 72 years old. So I have been with this lady half my life, almost to the day, half my life. We are married almost half my life to the day, four days away from half my life. And I had a great marriage, a great relationship with this female that God made for the goodness of man. So that relationship, the history of, of that, how I met her, how I got her attention, how I got her to marry me, how we got along and built a great relationship uh, was part of my business. We, we did lectures on this and we thought about this. Men and women are different and we had to approach this in a different way, and it was successful for us. We built a great, loving relationship, so that I consider it an honor to sit by her bed and watch her pass away. It was an honor to take care of her for two and a half years while she slowly died. And it was a lifetime of living with her when she was ill most of our lives. So the process wasn't the fun and the games. I began to realize if you talk to anyone about any subject that they're successful at, that person will start telling the things they overcame, not the good times. You just ask somebody how they've been married 60 years. They start telling you the overcoming. How you get a successful business. They start telling you the drama they had in their life. So I'm here to make, make a suggestion that maybe it's not to avoid the bad things. It's to learn from the bad things because it makes the whatever it is better. Crap in your life is fertilizer. And fertilizer makes things grow. You know, you, you get things cut off of you. You get you lose things. You, 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 you're stressed out because you lose things, cut off. A, a, a prone bush grows better because it has to recover from the cutting. That's why we have to look at life full of crap, but crap is fertilizer, and fertilizer makes things grow. So if you judge your life by who did you wrong, you're going to always be done wrong. Yes, men and women fight, argue, scheme, steal, break and use each other because we're humans but you cannot let the X affect the next we have to prepare ourselves for a loving relationship so I've been single now for years a couple of years now and I'm dating I'm meeting young ladies oh well, not young and I'm 72 so you're gonna be past menopause I just that's a personal it's a personal thing for me so I have uh, my camera said I need more light, and I understand. I just didn't want to bring the natural light into the place from the outside, but okay, it's a little better probably. Maybe a little shadow on the side. You know, I'm trying to try to do things right. I just don't want that light. I hate that light. So we, first off, understand, this is supposed to be easy. This was designed to be easy. This dating stuff was organized and planned by God to be easy. God looked at man. If you're not a Christian, this video will not be for you because everything I do is Christ-based, okay? So deal with it. And I'm giving my opinion. I'm a grown man, and, and I have an opinion about relationships, same that you do, and I may be right, may be wrong, so you email me, you contact me. Uh, my email is pretty easy to find. Um, it's, it's going to be a hard time to avoid hurting people's feelings, so let's just talk bluntly about what's going on here. God looked at man and said, it is not good. Therefore, if God said it's not good, it's not good. We got to play. 
It's not good for man to be alone. Man needs a for own good. God formed. God formed. It was your form that God thought about man's goodness. That's why, ladies, I admit, we are crazy about your form. It is made by God for our goodness. Does you no good at all. And we seek it. The drive to obtain it is the biggest drive in men's lives. Got it. We got it, ladies. We got it. Understand. And you don't think about sex like we think about sex because we have a sexual drive. We have a sexual desire. And it's just something you do. Just like we don't care about your career and about what blouse, color blouse you have on and how pretty your doggone shoes are. We don't care. We pretend like we care because basically men give you attention to get the sex and you give attention. You, you give sex to get the attention. It is a compromise. We're both getting what we want, but none of us are getting what we need. Let's discuss the need. Because, see, women are saying all the time they don't need a man. Really? Well, ladies, if you don't need a man, why would a man need you? I want a female that does not need a man. I'm a man. So if you don't need a man and, and some man seduce you, because you will be seduced, then you're going to have a situation where you don't really need the guy. You don't appreciate the guy. He's going to feel left out neglected. He's going to treat you differently. And you're not going to like it. Let's admit we need each other. Can we start with that? We need each other. We have to, you know, you know I want to ask you a question. I want you to email me up. I may put my email at the bottom of this. Why don't you email me? Mason at leadtheplantation.org, one of my email addresses. I want you to tell me something, ladies. What makes you accept a man? What What is it about a man's approach to you to get your attention? And, and the really important question is, why do you think a man approaches you? Why do you think a guy will walk up to you? Why do you think he's trying to talk to you? I mean, do you really believe he likes the color of your blouse? Do you think that he's attracted to how your hair is done? It's pretty. Your nails look great. Do you think he's really interested in where you get those pants from? For real, why does a man approach you? Because what's the difference between you and his sister? If he just likes taking out women, his cousin, his nieces. Why do you think the man comes and say, hello, how are you doing? What do you think he wants? Do you think that men actually sit around and try to be friends with women? What do we have in common? I mean, think, what do we have in common? Don't look at how you want it to be. Why do men come up to you and approach you or look at you and smile at you? Are we trying to see how good your makeup look? You think that you're pretty? That word pretty is a made up word. It's a made up word by women who don't want to be called sexy. Oh, you're pretty. Yeah, you're sexy. <laughs> That's what you are. So let's understand that. See if we can recognize that. And it's okay. You are formed to be beautiful. You are made to be beautiful. It doesn't matter what makeup you put on, how you do your hair, what lipstick you put on. It does not matter. It matters to your girlfriends because you're competing. It doesn't matter to the man. So I want to know. Email me. Send a message here. What is it? Why do you think a man approach you? Second question is, why did some men you accept and some men you reject? I, immediately. I'm not talking about when you get to know them. Immediately. Some men get your attention and can talk you into more attention. Or some men get brushed off immediately. What is it? Because I want to ask you, what are you looking for? In a man, if you are seeking a, a husband right now, why are you seeking a husband? What is the purpose of you looking, seeking, wanting, waiting, preparing yourself for a husband? And you women who say you don't need a man, this is not about you. You got what you want already, I'm sure. If you don't want a man, I'm sure you don't have a man. So you can stop bragging about not needing a man. And you young ladies who believe that your career, your education, your job, your association... Is going to be attractive to a man. Let me assure you, it's not. It's not unattractive either. But we don't really, we don't really care. Uh, we're not looking for a business merger. We're not. And you having a job, it's like caring what color blouse you wear. I like the blouse. It doesn't. It, okay, you got a blouse. It, we're not looking. I think that women are trying to become the men that they want. 
You want a man with a great career. You want a man that's educated. You want a man that's smart. So you come out, you get your degrees, you get your business, you get your position in, 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 in a corporate letter, and you want a man to recognize that. And you think that if a man sees you possessing the same qualities that he has, he think it's a good match. We'd be a great partnership. Yeah, because I want a woman on the battlefield with me. In general, ladies, it's not true. We, we're not impressed. We don't care one way or another. It's not like we think it's negative. Your business career, I mean, I'm not excited about having to go to another man to ask for your time off so that you can go out with me or go to a, to a trip with me. Uh, your, your job is really more important to me because you can't miss that job. You got to get down there for that meeting. But I know that 30 years from now, well, I'm old now, maybe 10 years from now, <laughs> you won't know none of their names at the office. It's going to be you and I. The kids will be gone. The kids will be grown. Grandkids are grown. It's going to be you and I. When my wife passed away in my bed, in my bedroom, nobody from the office was there. Her sisters wasn't, was not there. Her girlfriend that she knew for 30 years wasn't there. It was me. Just me. And that's what I expect for my woman, to be someone that she's considered worth watching to die. So your career, sweetheart, doesn't mean a thing to us. What makes a difference to us is your femininity. That's the difference. So I want you guys to write me on I want to understand what you're saying because I'm looking for a wife. And most men my age, I'm 72 years old. I want to travel. And what I'm not impressed with is you being busy. Women get busy. Bless your heart. You hate, you hate being bored. You hate having nothing to do. So you get a divorce or your, or your husband passes away. You find yourself empty nest, and you get busy. You go to the dance lessons. You take the piano lessons. You you volunteer to be in the choir of the church. You go to the homeless shelter to feed the homeless. You get busy, busy, and you get obligated to your busyness. You get obligated. So when a good guy comes along and he says, hey, can we go to dinner? Well, I got to go down here to feed the homeless at the homeless shelter. Uh, I got to make sure I go to church, get that choir ready for Sunday morning. I blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Do go and find somebody that's free. Do I'm not, I'm not going to sit and wait for you to finish up, cleaning up what you're doing at your job somewhere. I'm 72. You should be free. If you're not free, you got to go someplace else. I'm not going to wait. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care how wonderful you are to be with. I'm not going to submit myself waiting because you're so doggone busy. The Bible says that a, a bridesmaid's prepare herself for the groom. Are you prepared for the groom? Ladies, if you're single, your husband is already living on planet Earth. Your husband is already here. Your husband is also seeking you. Men are hunters. Some men seek to play and to pray. Pray on you, not pray for you. Not pray over you. Pray on you, not pray, not pray over you. And some men are seeking the relationship. Some are seeking the marriage, and there is a difference between the men. If you go to me on coach.clarenceamason.com, I may be able to talk to you about the difference and how to prepare yourself and put you in a place where men looking for wives can show up. Because, ladies, you are the, you're the, you're the flower. You're stuck in the ground. You're planted somewhere. And where you're stuck in the ground, it will determine what comes to pollinate with you. The beauty you're putting out will attract the bee, the wasp, the hummingbird. You need to determine what you're looking for and what you want to find you and present yourself ready to be found. You cannot. I had a woman told me, she, I'm going to get married in two years. You have no idea when you're going to get married. You cannot determine, but men can. Men can determine. Right now, you know, it's easier for a man to find a wife than a woman to find a husband. It's easier for a woman to find a boyfriend than a man to find a girlfriend. See, it's easier because men are hunters and we will find what we want. We'll make it work for you. We do all the things for you to make it work. But is it worth your time? You will not know. You will not know unless you do two things. You either ask very hard questions up front, make that first couple of dates an interrogation, of this dude, he found out later on, three, four months when you fall in love with the guy can't get out of the relationship. If you're dating a guy, as soon as you meet this dude, you start asking very hard questions. You start asking pointed, 
interview questions. Have you ever been arrested? Have you been known to beat a woman? Have you cheated on somebody? How many babies you got out here? Ask those questions. Do you have a stable income? Do you live with your mother and father? Ask those questions up front the first 15 minutes to talk to a guy. Here's why. I know you think, but well, I don't want to pretend like I'm, I'm rude and pushy. Uh, just wait and see how it goes. If you wait and see how it goes, sweetheart, it's going to go nowhere. Because he's going to seduce you. You're made to be seduced. If you wait to see how it goes, he will seduce you. So you need to ask the very hard questions because good guys want to brag to you about what they've done. Good guys want to let you know I'm a stable good dude. Bad guys start getting defensive. They start saying, well, why are you asking all these personal questions? Why are you getting all my business like this? That is your clue. That's your hint. And get about your business. Second thing you should be doing is have a good man in your life that loves you and does not want to make love to you. It could be uncle, daddy, cousins. It could be your, your best friend's great husband. And your first date, young ladies. Listen to, listen to Grandpa now. Your first date should be a double date with your girlfriend and her husband or your uncle and his wife or somebody that you trust and know is a good, wise man and let him read this dude on your first date before you fall in love. And he can't sit down and tell you, play no game on you. He can't sit down and lie to you. He's got Mr. sitting here who can read all the lies because we all know the playbook. It, it's worked for thousands of years. The playbook works on you. So find out if you can do that and then let your girlfriend's man or the dude in your life tell you when it's over if the guy's any good and believe the guy talking to you. My discussions with, with ladies over this came about right after my wife passed away. This is, this is, this is Brenda. Uh, her, her, her first bout with cancer, she wrote this book, Goosebumps. You can't see the writing on here, but Goosebumps was a poetry book when she got her first bout of cancer. And it's Goosebumps, Inspirational Courage and Fear. She faced this like a warrior. This woman faced this cancer. Her family only died of cancer. She lost a sister, uh, two cousins, her mother, two nieces. She lost every member of her family, only dies of cancer. So when she caught cancer in 2004, she didn't care. She was not going to be afraid. She wrote this book as she laid in, in, in chemo. She became the first person in her family to survive cancer. And they had a very aggressive approach. So I'm going to give this book away to everyone who orders Raunchy Secrets Only Wild Should Know. This book is made... From discussion I have with women, you can find it at the website God Commands with an S Sex. God Commands Sex. He told Adam and Eve to go out and, and be fruitful and multiply the earth. He wants you to get busy. He wants you to get down. It is the it is the common ground between men and women. And you better understand your role in that. So the Ranchi Secrets, only wife should know at GodCommandsSex.com. You get a free copy of Brenda's book, Ghost Goosebumps. And the, the, the conversation came about when her girlfriends and friends of mine started calling me after her death to ask me how did we have such a great marriage. It was really a really great marriage. I am not looking for another Brenda. She was unique like every one of you ladies. Unique. What I am looking for is Joy, uh, a Christian, conservative, Republican woman, uh, I prefer a widow because you've gone through that like I've gone through that and you've had a good marriage and that you're looking for the same thing. But I would I would talk to any ladies that's, that's past menopause. I ain't doing that twice. <laughs> so I want to... And, and the second question I have here, why do, cho why, why, why do men approach you, ladies? What are we looking for? I mean, really, you got to think about that. Why? Because women think that men come up to you because they, they just like female company. Are you kidding me? No. No. A gentleman will, will tiptoe around the, top, the topic, but this topic is still there. Uh, a, a dude will come up to you and be aggressive about the topic, but the topic is still there. Why do you think a man will walk up to you and ask that question? Hi, what's your name? Sweetheart, you know the reason. But women cannot discuss the reason, but here's why. Because I understand. See, women are decent. They really are decent creatures. And the sexual thing is, you know, it, society tells you how 
raunchy it is and how uh, negative it is. And if a female who thinks of herself as being sophisticated and honorable and collective uh, does something with a man that is raunchy because she, she, she falls for the game, we both enjoy sex. So if you're enjoying sex too much, you may think negative of yourself and the next day you feel like you have you have been treated badly or you acted badly and maybe his fault. And then so you just start blaming a guy because you had a good time. That's the problem because it is raunchy, sweetheart. I, I got that. You need to determine that you need to be married. Men, at my age especially, some of them are going for these little, little, little young girls. I had to do it, so I do it today at the coffee club. Tell my 20 year old girls, 65 year old dude, 20 year old girl, that's. That's foolish. That's that's foolish. It's, that's, there's nothing you're going to do with a 20-year-old girl but spend money. That's it. That's all you're going to do with a 20-year-old girl. I want somebody that's past menopause, somebody that's seen how they do this, somebody that recognized black and white TV, somebody that sit down and talk about the old music and enjoy life. I, I'm looking for a wife like everybody else, but I want you to get the book. I want you to start discussing this. Let's have an online discussion at this site or online, uh, Facebook, is a, it's an official Raunchy Secrets Only Wives Should Know. And another site, Raunchy Secrets Only only Women Wives Should Know. And we're going to blend the two together. We're going to have a discussion. We may even have seminars again to discuss these. But send me your questions. If you want coaching, go to coach.clarenceamason.com and sign up. Uh, I'm not cheap, but I'm effective. Uh, I, but I want to sit on a, I want your, I want your email. I want, you, I want you to send me your questions. Let's start discussing this. Let's start talking about this because men and women are falling further and further apart. We cannot even speak to each other. We have no respect for each other. Alpha females. What is that? What is that? Strong woman. What is that? Eve tried to be like God. And so therefore, we're having this, this sexual revolution. It's this, this battle between the sexes. Are you kidding? A battle between the sexes? not natural. You're beautiful and you're soft. You're gentle. I like that. I like females. And I'm and I'm protective of females. What I don't like are females that talk to me in a tone of voice even a grown man would not do. I mean, I'm 72, disabled, fragile. Some 25-year-old dude, 6'4", 230 pounds, there is no doubt he can take me physically. There's no doubt. But even a man like that will not talk to me in the same tone that a female will at the at the grocery store. Because she feels she has to you know, swell up and present herself in an authoritarian manner. And most men back away because we think it's stupid. We think it's foolish and insulting. We back away. But you're not strong. You're weak. You may and that weakness makes us protect you. And that protection allows you to be secure in your neighborhood. It works both ways. That's if you're a female, I'm a male, life is better for everybody. So ladies, I want you to discuss that with you. So get, get a hold of me, stay on this site, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the notification button so that I'll be able to notify you when I am going live. And this program is not live right now, so to send you, you have to make your comments available to me. And I will come back if I get any comments and answer those another tape. This is Mason. Let's find each other. I'm looking for you, and you're looking for me. Let's find each other. Men are seeking wives. Wives should be seeking husbands. If you do it that way, you're going to be played. It's amazing. Stay right, be left. Eternity is a long time to be wrong. God bless you.